Hi, everybody, and welcome to Open Mic Marketing with Liz Scott. I am super excited to be here today. This is one of my favorite things to do, uh, and we do it every month. And I know that I mentioned today we're going to be highlighting social media, but that certainly doesn't mean that it's exclusive to social media. So. I encourage you to, as always, um, ask whatever questions that you think are relevant. And there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Um, the first of which is so a lot of you guys, and I'm, I'm super excited about this, have been emailing me questions. Uh, whether or not you're shy and you don't want to say them out loud, um, but I'm always happy, to, always happy to answer your questions on the program live, so thank you for emailing me. Uh, you also have the option of raising your hand if you are working at a computer and listening that way, or you can always type a question into the chat box and I will read it out loud. So just the 30 second overview for those of you who have never been on open mic with me before. I think this is about four or five months now we've been running the program and it really came out because there's a lot of entrepreneurs who struggle with marketing questions um, that they can probably have answered in a relatively short manner and so I'm happy to do that and give that back to the community and also we always start the program with some top marketing trends and I think people find that very helpful at least that's the feedback that I've been getting. So a little bit about my background, I spent 25 years as a marketing and sales VP in high tech and telecommunications, got the benefit of seeing uh, what really works in large Fortune 500 businesses as well as startups. I am a certified professional coach, business coach, and I really focus on helping entrepreneurs with their business growth strategies predominantly in the areas of sales and marketing. Uh, I also am a speaker, I'm an author, I'm a panelist, and for those women on the call, I wanted to let you know about an event that I'm co-hosting and speaking at in Markham, at the Markham Hilton at 8500 Warden. So it's March 23rd, it's called Powerful Women Today. It's an all-day conference. Uh, if you're interested in registering, you can go to PowerfulWomenToday.com and use the promo code for listening to Open Mic Marketing. And it's Hive99. So that's H like Harold, I like Igloo, V like Victory, E like Edward, 99. Nine. Uh, and you will get the entire day, including lunch, for $99 plus HST. So super exciting, and it's going to be a great day. We've got amazing sponsors and speakers and panelists who are going to be talking about uh, health, wealth, and empowerment for women. So sorry, guys, you don't get to come to this one. I believe they're going to be doing another one in the fall where they're going to invite men and women, uh, but this one's just for the ladies, so hopefully you guys can attend. Okay, so having said all of that, let's do our top trends uh, for the month. And so because we're doing something a little differently this month by highlighting social media, I thought it would be interesting to give you guys the top three social media tips and tricks for what's trending this month in social media. So one of the main things that's trending is to focus on social messaging. So what do I mean by social messaging? So you've got Facebook Messenger, you've got WhatsApp, You've got WeChat. And so really what that is, is a way to communicate with your clients and potential clients in a more generalized and intimate fashion. So Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and WeChat have more subscribers combined than Facebook and LinkedIn. 
It's also the number one way that millennials are using to communicate with each other and also with their potential clients. So if you go back to Instant Messenger, it's very similar to that, but it is a great way to get instant responses back from people you're starting to stay in touch with. For some reason, we all see an urgency to a text message through WhatsApp or Messenger or WeChat. We have a tendency to respond to that in a faster fashion. It creates some sense of urgency that we feel like, okay, this is quick, I can answer this right now. Um, I know that a lot of the direct sales, multi-level marketing companies have been using this for a while and it seems to have really caught on. So absolutely focus on communicating with your customers and potential customers through social messaging. And the advantage to you guys is that you'll likely get a faster response if you've been trying to get in touch with people through email or voicemail as I said there's some psychological perspective to absolutely um, getting an answer back via social message or text message so that's the number one trend that's going on in the first quarter of 2017 the second one, and we've talked about this on previous open mic calls, is live videos. So I get a lot of questions and live videos are, are trending like crazy, right? And so why do we want to showcase ourselves and our business using video? Well, first of all, again, it's pretty fast, so usually your videos should be anywhere between 30 and 60 seconds. Any more than that and you start to lose people's attention and focus. So you want to showcase you, your business, and it gives a sense of what your personality is like. So it really helps to build that know, like, and trust factor when you're out prospecting and looking for new clients because it gives a sense of okay that's a real person behind that company and here's the things that they care about so the most popular one still is YouTube absolutely but then obviously Facebook live a lot of people are streaming live from their cars or their offices and Instagram is within the next 60 days also launching a live streaming app embedded into their application as well. So just a really great way in terms of social media again to give relevant content through your video while you're actually showcasing you, your business and what you're all about. And then the final trend that's happening in 2017 with social media and digital communication is chatbots. So C-H-A-T-B-O-T-S. So like a robot, only it's a chatbot. So you guys probably know this as an open chat box where if you go on to someone's website, they have, would you like to chat live? So the last example for me that I used this on was on Rogers. And what it does is it gives you instant customer service. So that's why we as business owners might want to consider this down the line. Now, I know it might be a bit, a bit out of your realm, but you're going to see more and more and more of that. Why? Because people are sick and tired of voicemail jail where you're continuously being prompted, hit five for this, hit seven for this, hit one for this, and not really getting your questions answered. So by having the chat bot, it just gives you the opportunity to tell the company what's going on within the problem that you're having. So how can I help you? What are you looking for? So that's another very, very, very popular trend that you're seeing with companies that really want to stand out in terms of their customer service, they're putting a little chat box or a chat bot where you can get your questions answered by a live customer service representative and not having to go through, as I said, 
voicemail jail. So those are your top trends for March 2017. Uh, and I know it's March break for a lot of people in Canada and across the United States. So hopefully you guys are enjoying March break uh, if you're so inclined. And let's jump into our first question that was emailed into me. Uh, and we'll go back and forth between live, but I am starting, as I said, to get more and more email questions, which is awesome. So I'm going to just read out the first one. So the first question is, how many social media sites should I be on for my business? So great question. How many social media sites should I be on for my business? You know, I'm always of the opinion that less is more. And depending on what your business is, if you do a lot of business to business, then you probably want to be on LinkedIn for sure. Uh, if you do a lot of business to entrepreneurs or business to consumer, then you probably want to be on Facebook, Instagram. Um, those are probably the main ones, particularly if you do something visual. So, you know, I would say, do one or two social media um, very, very well and keep your focus on having great content. And here's the other thing. If you have multiple social media sites, you have to maintain them. And that's a lot of work. So you want to make sure that you're on top of it, but not overwhelmed. And actually, it's interesting because I got another email question from a different um, person about social media overwhelm. So I am going to address that again. But right now, you know, I think focus on the things that are going to get you the highest return for your social media investment. And by that, I mean not only money, but potentially the amount of time that you spend. And where does your target audience hang out? And what are they looking for? So, you know, I would rather that you did one or two social media platforms really, really, really well than be on five or six or seven. Because the more that you're on, the more that you actually have to maintain. And that can chew up an awful lot of your time. The other thing when you're talking about being cross-platform is that you want to make sure that there's some consistency in whatever your handles are. So what is your Facebook name? What is your LinkedIn name? What is your Twitter name? What is your Instagram name? What is your Pinterest name? Whatever those are, you need to make sure that they're as consistent as possible because people want to be able to find you. Right? They don't want to have to go hunting and looking for you. So great question. Um, I hope that that answered it for you. And again, always with social media, quality is better than quantity. Okay, so I'm scanning through the ones that were read in. Let's, um, let's go to that overwhelm question that... that um, one of our listeners emailed in and it is I find social media completely overwhelming what are the benefits of me to outsource it so that's also a great question and I know that there's a lot of people who don't feel particularly competent or just don't have the time to schedule posts and you know they they're not really sure what sort of software platform they should be doing they're busy doing other things in their business they don't necessarily love social media so a lot of people entrepreneurs will outsource that piece if they don't feel comfortable and that's okay if you want to do that, but I'm going to give you a couple of provisos around thinking about outsourcing your social media. So the first thing is, even if you outsource your social media to multiple platforms, you still need to be involved. You still need to be involved because it's your business and your brand and your voice. 
So you will want to map out some sort of editorial calendar for your social media person. What is it on a monthly basis that you want to talk about? And I advise that you have some sort of continuous theme per month. So you want to make sure that you and the person you've outsourced or the company you've outsourced your social media to are on the same page. In your editorial calendar, you also want to map out how frequently you want the posts and what platform you want them posted on, right? So you don't want to be hands off. You want to monitor what they're talking about for the first couple of months to make sure that they're consistent with what it is that you want to say. It still, as I said, has to be your voice, your brand. You're going to want to weave in your picture and some personal quotes and things of that nature that are coming from you. So you absolutely want to look at what is the value of outsourcing versus the amount of money and time that you would have to spend to do that. If you want to do just very small bursts of social media, you probably don't need to outsource. If you want a very strong awareness and presence and you're really trying to ramp up your business, it might be worthwhile outsourcing it to somebody to help get you going. So another great question, and I thought that those two were relevant to each other and that it would be absolutely worthwhile to um, to raise those together. So let me just check in with our live people and see if anybody actually uh, has a hand up. And I don't see one at this point, so I'm going to continue on with some of the questions that we have had uh, in the chat box. Okay, so the next question in the chat box is, how often should I post? Oh, and this question, guys, comes up all the time. It comes up in my with my clients. It comes up when I do speaking engagements. You know, it's it's one of the absolute most common questions that I get with social media. And you know, unfortunately, there's no real hard and fast rule. I mean, I know everybody would love me to wave a magic wand and say, here's exactly, you know, how many times you should be posting. The general rule of thumb is you should be posting at least once or twice a week, so within a seven day period. But here's the thing again. I would rather that you had something really relevant to say than posting multiple times with things that are not speaking directly to your target audience, right? So you'll see lots of funny cat videos and you'll see, you know, people posting what their day is going to be look like, you know, that's just social media noise. You're running a business. So while you don't necessarily want to be posting constantly about promotions or courses or programs or services that you have to offer, because the general rule is you only want to promote your business and yourself 20%, the other 80% should be posts that are absolutely relevant to what your listeners want to know about what it is that you do, because they're listening and they're interacting with you. So based on what your business is, if you've got something amazing to say, then absolutely you should post it. If there's some amazing trend happening in your industry that day, even if you don't have a scheduled post or you weren't gonna post that day, but if something's going on in the world where you go, wow, that's really relevant, or there was an article published on CNN or Forbes that you happen to read, then you absolutely want to reach out to your social media audience and talk about that. And that just shows them that you're on it, that you understand how important it is to talk about things that are relevant to your industry. So again, no hard and fast rules, but to really have an established presence, you probably want to post at least once or twice 
within a week. It's up to you whether, and there's no proven statistics, whether it's better to post during the week or the weekend. Some people do all their social media catch up and read through everything on the weekend. You know, it really, again, depends on what your schedule is like, and then you'll get to know what it's like for your audience and when they start to read. Okay, so next in the chat box is how can social media impact my SEO? So thank you. Uh, SEO, for those of you on the call who are not familiar with the term, is uh, search engine optimization. So that's keywords that typically are on your website um, that will help to drive traffic to your website. So usually if people Google something, you know, your name will come up or your company name will come up. So how does social media um, impact SEO? Probably the biggest way to do that is to, and you know, for those of you who are on the call who follow my social media, you will see that a couple times a month I will post the beginning of my blog and then the link to my blog on my social media posts. So what that's doing is driving traffic to your website because people are going to start to read it and then they're going to go, yeah, I want to finish reading it, therefore I have to go to the website. So in that sense, it, social media is impacting your search engine optimization. And I highly recommend that for you guys if you are a blogger or if you've got some amazing new content, you know, tips and tricks sheet or a quiz or a contest, whatever that looks like, and you really want to put that um, link to that in your social media. So that's that's one way that you can do it. Uh, the second way, and I highly recommend this as well, is look at what is trending and then include hashtags for that. And you can do that, just type in what's trending, hashtag what's trending, and it will tell you all of those things. So you can incorporate that <clears throat> into your social media posts and that's going to raise your visibility for social media and then that in and of itself is going to get people curious about ha huh, who's this person what you know what are they all about and that will drive traffic to your website and then you can always cross link so anytime in your social media that you can quote a highly reliable source that's relevant to your listeners, so for example, uh, Huffington Post, CNN, um, uh, Forbes magazine, for me, Marketing Sherpa, you know, any of those very, very reputable, reputable publications that post on a consistent basis, that's also going to really help to drive people to go to your website and that's going to increase your search engine optimization as well. So that was another great question. Thank you. We're getting lots of stuff going on in the chat box today. Uh, okay. So next question is a Pinterest question. Okay. So how can I use Pinterest to boost my blog? Uh, okay. So Pinterest, um, Pinterest tends to be very visual. So for my clients who have a visual business like interior designers, house stagers, personal organizers, anyone who has something that they can really feature before and after, I recommend Pinterest. Pinterest has a tendency to be a bit more social and by that I mean people go there for craft ideas, they go there for recipes, etc., etc. But if you're in that business, then, then Pinterest is the right thing to do. Um, so the easiest way to do that is to pin your blog post directly onto your Pinterest account, right? Just pin your blog post link. But here's the thing, with all things marketing related, you always want to 
to have a super catchy title. So when you're posting your blog, you want to say the top three tricks or unavoidable mistakes for or the no-fail way to something that's going to capture people's interest on Pinterest, pun intended, right? Because if you want to drive people to your blog, you're going to have to have an amazing visual. That's a given. That's what Pinterest is all about. But then you really need a catchy title to go along with it. And I think that's probably the best way to drive traffic. Great visual, great catchy title, you know, link to your blog, a little bit about what it's about, and then driving traffic towards that. So hopefully that helps. Uh, okay, how do I know how effective my social media is? Oh, yeah, okay. Another question that comes up all the time. So there's a couple of ways that you can measure the effectiveness of what it is that you are trying to accomplish with your social media. So the first is, you know, awareness, because social media has multiple uses. But the first one is, you know, am I getting the kind of awareness that I'm looking for? So how do you know if you're getting awareness? Well, you want to take a look at, are people commenting on things that you're posting? Are people liking the things that you're posting? You know, are people following you? So do you, is your on a monthly basis when you're looking at your so social media platforms, are your number of likes and followers growing and growing and growing? Because that's a great way for you to track whether your awareness levels are growing, right? The second thing we want to accomplish and we want to measure on social media is are you getting leads? Because again, at the end of the day, we are trying to establish ourselves as thought leaders, but we want to get some leads. So if you're publishing, 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 and never getting a single lead, then you might want to take a look at what's going on in your social media sphere. Because you should be at least getting some inquiries through some of the social media posts that you're making. Now, that's going to take time. Social media is a slow build. But at some point, you should be starting to get some inquiries, either through LinkedIn or Facebook or you know, whatever platform you're looking at. And then the final way that you can measure is what kind of traffic are you generating from your social media? Because you probably will have something on your website that says, contact me or let me offer you a free consultation uh, or get a free download or something like that. So you want to really understand how much of your web traffic is coming through your social media channels. And that's very easy to do. All you have to do is set up Google Analytics and it will capture your social media traffic. Google Analytics is free. Um, if you don't know how to do that, there's videos that can walk you through, uh, or you can just ask your web hosting provider to set that up for you. So hopefully this has been a value to you guys. Um, we do open mic every month uh, from 12 till 12.30 Eastern Standard Time, and we are coming up on the half hour. Uh, so let me just give you a little bit of overview. Um, our next open mic session will be from 12 till 12.30 Eastern Standard Time on April the 12th. And as always, anyone who is interested in a complimentary strategy session with me, I am happy to put you into my calendar. So please just email me, lscott at affinitycoach.com and put in the header complimentary session and I am happy to book you in. And as always, I hope you can join us on the next Open Mic Marketing, 
And I'm loving that you guys are emailing questions into me throughout the course of the month. I'm loving that you're putting things into the chat box. And as always, you have the opportunity to raise your hand and ask questions. So again, thanks so much for joining me on Open Mark Marketing with Liz Scott. And I hope to hear you and see you all next month. Take care, everybody. Bye.